Con la guardia non piglio. E scappo sempre quasi sto qualcosa a fare. Il po' vedi chi le legge si scende. E basta sempre. A chi lo vuole? For thousands of years. That's why when you accept the different the different masters, how do you know who is right and wrong? That is the point that uh, you have to consider. And if you cannot find out, you have to clear IV the thing, you see. Clear IV the thing. So I can point out, uh, you ask about God, who is God? Yes. Clear. It's not meant to answer that question. Because there is many aspects about God you have to go through. You probably need another class or two more class. Today, you only want to concentrate on one thing, the purpose of life. But I'm going to show you from the fourth lecture something that might show you. And the ancient master never realized this thing. They are just jumping from the fourth lesson. Now you read the two. In the beginning, when God created all beings by the sacrifice of Himself, He said unto them, Who no sacrifice He can procreate, and He shall satisfy all your desires. Lord Vishnu sacrificed Himself in the first Purushman, Yatma, in order to create the universe and all living beings. The Purusha, Shukha, and Shakta Brahman are ancient texts that describe this creation story. In these texts, they say that the universe was created from the body of primordial being, Purusha, <coughs> who was sacrificed by the gods. So this being who is called Purusha, the uh, Hindu scripture, like the Gita said, he sacrificed himself and he incarnated in the world. All the living beings that uh, come from him. Of course, here are his lovish The other scripture is called Purusa. Uh, it's like a giant legend of Pangu, you know. Legend of Pangu, Pangu, huge giant, he created the universe after that that he died. He's given back to come the whole universe. This legend of time to tell you, God forms you. Now, the Vida has a lot of questions about this. Next one. Okay. I think the point never to realize this thing. You read the next one. Ah, Raja Bhakti. God desired to become a sacrificial body in order to be sacrificed by saints. Raja Bhakti offers himself as sacrifice, thus obtaining redemption for devas. There are three persons in the Godhead. They are the Raja Bhakti, the Vishvakama, and the Purusha. They are the same and one God. About the Vishka, Vishva Kama, it is said, He created all things. He makes burnt offerings of Himself. About the Purusha, He is Prajapati and Atmi, Shatapath. He said, We are the Bra Bra Brahman. He created all. He becomes sacrifice to be offered by the Devas. The Christian have never seen it, but actually this is what Genesis is trying to say. God sent the breath of life and he become a living soul. But the Hindus have got all this. Yet now, if you ask a Hindu, they also don't realize why. Because they never read the Vida. But I read it and I know it's all there. You see. So the ancient master, the ancient or like Krishna, all this. They wrote down the Vida, they wrote down the Gita, they wrote down the Brahmana, you see. They are not. This is the God because 
they know they are mortal. So when they die, uh, they left behind all these ancient texts, you see. And they say the same thing. God emanated. We are the incarnation of God. But if you ask who is God, it's not a purpose of this class to answer that. God may be in the Milky Way, he may be in another planet, we don't know yet. But we have not assembled the scripture to find out. Is it? But by this thing, we have tried to support what I said earlier. God breathed the life into you. So you ask him, how do this God uh, come to you? So I look at it, uh, I will say that uh, he interfered with your mother's womb. And there are two passages that uh, show God actually interfered with your womb. Dr. Lim, I did not say it, you know. It is the scripture to say it. The scripture is not necessarily right. Depends on who writes it. Okay, we will continue. Now it's very fine now. You have an immortal entity. After you die, where will it go? Now this this one we will go discuss it and we may start on the reincarnation, which is a very controversial issue. <laughs> Most people are the one who die. <laughs> So the Gila said, Yama, those two dogs are yours, Yama, the watcher for my son. Blue and man and dark the pathway to heaven. Dark here in the second year, Yama, to enjoy Rome among the people. This is the two hell dogs. Now this is the Hindu legend. Of course, the, the Christian will say the hell of hell. If they are bad, the hell of hell will come and drive the soul to hell. The Chinese have got a woman. So all the ancient culture born out. Someone will take you along a path after you die. And you see this guy, uh, Yama, Yama Ong. Uh, Hey, this is accompanied by two animals. Dog. But Yama is trying to tell you, you don't be afraid of me. Uh, you already want my wife, you already first. Yama gathers men together who searches out and shows a part of men. Yama first allowed for us a place to delve in. In this pasture, never can be taken from us. Men born on earth track their own path that lead them to our ancient father and Jafiti father. When you die, Yama will come and escort you to where your ancestors go. Don't tell me you're interested in going to hell. <laughs> Grandma will come and say hello. Now I will be your bodyguard. I will escort you all the way to see your great grandfather, great great grandfather. So you cannot prove anything. 
But I told Chen, that's the way to verify it. It's like the MPA case study. You know? In the MPA, uh, you are given a case study to illustrate a point. Then, the more case study you have, that say the same thing, then the issue uh, is very because it becomes statistically confirmed. I said, this is what I'm doing here. I'm giving you a number of scriptures. One scripture says, uh, maybe, uh, two scriptures say, uh, statistically both is difficult. If I give you four or five, uh, it is very significant, and I won't look back on the reading. But it's true. It says the same thing again and again, not only from the same source, even from Christianity, Buddhism, Gita, they all say the same thing. That they can't touch it. So I would say it's pro. This is why I'm trying to warn you. And I don't want to quote one scripture. You cannot tell. But when I do a lot, uh, then you will know. Like just now, uh, how many verses I quote for you uh, for the imagination? The Bible was not born you know. The Bible also has this passage. So I know uh, the ancient master, they say the same thing. And if you contradict them, uh, I cannot believe you. This is the point. You know what? I have to be objective. But anyway, let's continue on. Here uh, it says uh, your forefathers go there. Uh, I don't know if people really realize that the Bible also says the same thing. You know. That uh, you turn to where your forefathers are. So in the Kabbalah, you will sing this song during Hanukkah Christmas. Where our forefathers go, God please take us there. Another you are asking. Now, Tony, you read. Meet Yama, meet the fathers, meet the merit of free of all the men in highest heaven. Please sin and evil, seek a new, be daily, and bright with those who wear another body. Another word, so it says, you will go, but this time, you will have another body. You throw away your biological body, you put on another body. This another body is the honor of God that you are looking for. Some more. Okay, uh, you read the first one. Atava Veda Book X and Team 826. This fair one is untouched by age. Immortal in a mortal's house, he for whom she was made lies low, and he who formed her has grown old. You read the next one? Akhava Veda Book uh, 18. 18. Him 3, 58. Meet the Yama, meet the fathers, meet the merit of virtuous action in the loftiest heaven. This sin and evil seek a new die dwelling. So bright with glory, let him join his glory. 59. Our fathers, fathers, and their sires before them, they who have entered into as white region, for them shall self resplendent asunity, form bodies now according to her pleasure. So it says, uh, number one is the best uh. You are not mortal, you are immortal in a mortal body. And then when you die, uh, you will meet your father, still a new your body, a new body, which is bright with glory. This new body is a shining body. It is not a mortal body. It's made of substance uh, which is akin to God. I thought it cannot be made God. You want to be with God, you must remain of something of God, compatible matter. Yeah. Your body cannot mean God. What about the Bible? If your body comes to God, it will be burned. 
that God is a fire. So you can only meet God in a heart of body that cannot be burned by the form of the eternal. Your spirit that went far away to Yama, your spirit that went far away back to earth and heaven, your spirit that uh, went to the field of life, you, your spirit goes that far away to this all. Uh, the all here uh, is this version of God. Uh, they call it Atma, conscious, but at this Part of the Rigveda, he used the word all. Some part of the Rigveda call it Shia, the master. Some part I remember is Fara, the Lord. Atma is very common. So now you get an idea that when you die, you are supposed to have a new shining body. This new shining body will be formed by your reaction to this world. If you are full of love, you do the good thing, your shining body will be perfect. You know? But if you are a cruel person, your shining body will be very So it depends on you. you know? Don't blame God. Let's try to go to heaven. You cannot ask the vision. Hey, how come my body is so dark? <laughs> God will say you clear. You know? <laughs> By the way, uh, <laughs> you have four chapters that I have read through the Gita. Different parts are written by different seers. It has no one master who write down all these things. But you can see uh, the different parts uh, say many similar things. We read uh, the first book. Akhavida is the last one, the fourth one. But you find the passage that they will say the same thing. So that's why I mean, Dr. Lee, repetition of the scripture is very important. When you have a major doctrine, you cannot rely on one scripture. It's not enough. So I have to find out more and more. Now that's why it's very, very beautiful. We already write this up. Huh? So now, uh, uh, I think I like my nephew to read the book. I've never seen it before. Can you read this one? Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Confucius said, The Hun or Chi returns to heaven. And the body of the poor returns to the earth. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, when you die, your body returns to earth, but the spirit in you will go back to God who gave it. So you actually come from God. The Vida already said you are immortal in the mortal body. Now the Chinese also say, Confucian also say, when you die, the key will go back to heaven, but your body and poor goes back to the earth. Three different great cultures say the same thing. So we have to realize that you are a mortal, walking in a mortal body. Oh ho! Actually, this phrase uh, show that you die, you go straight to heaven, you go straight to God. It's like many Hindu scholars pointed out that is what the Vida said, and therefore they do not believe in reincarnation. But they are not fully like. There is some kind of reincarnation, but we come to that up. 
The main thing is, you are immortal. When you die, where you go? Go to heaven. Why you go to heaven? Two things. Why? You mean you are in Chaksa. Second thing is, you put on a new body. Hachem. So you got so many scriptures that are trying to tell you the same thing. You know. Inside you is the breath of life. This plus the body becomes the soul, the living thing. Now when you when you are the breath of life, how does this thing happen? You cannot go to hell. <laughs> 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 You laugh, not know very well that a Christian learns. I tell you about how, but I told my sister in law, how can you go to the house? You are a man of God, man. I let go, are you telling me? Not Hanty, Hanchun's wife. Christian. <laughs> but you know what? I'm making all this conclusion from the scriptures. You know? I learned the scriptures for themselves. I don't, I mean, I hope uh, that I don't uh, put up for my own uh, conjunction. <laughs> So, it cannot go to hell, impossible. Ah, this is Bodo Tordo. Bodo Tordo is written by Padma Sambhava. He is the founder of Tibetan uh, Buddhism. And he is considered to be the second Buddha. Now what he write in the text that he left behind is amazingly shocking. Because what he write in this book is contrary to the Buddhist view about death. But anyway, he mentioned that this book is about yoga, the union of MVP with the perfect enlightenment you know. And inside there, he described uh, when the person died, uh, there is 45 to 49 days uh, where you can carry out prayer. And apparently, the prayer that the family do can help the destiny of the dead person. It may actually, when you die, you don't need to go to heaven yet. Uh, for 49 days to linger around and during the period your family can still give you a kick to have a live. <laughs> <laughs> if you are biased, okay. But if you are not so biased, you can pay the price to chant the holy verses that will kick the ancestor to heaven. <laughs> that will make sure your ancestor, the dead person, take the real train to heaven. Now, let's see the sound of the thing, the second Buddha left. You know, uh, you guys talk in Patanjali Yawa Sutra. It's the same as the Diamond Sutra, but I'm not going to go into this. This one also requires a few jet classes. But now, uh, Okay, I think you talk about the danger of death. You read, you read after I learned the tell you, read the second part. Then the law of death was, you say, I will consult the mirror of karma. So say, he looked into the mirror, very good and evil act, he 
is vividly reflected. Lion will do be of no will. Then, one of the executive theories of the Lord of the Dead will place ground my neck, rope, and drag me along. He will cut off my head, extract my heart, pour my intestines, wake up my brain, drink my blood, eat my flesh, and gnaw my bones. But how will be incapable of dying? Although my body be hacked to pieces, it will revive again. The repeated hacking will cause intense pain and torture. So, when the person dies, Yama will use the mirror of karma to do him. And then suddenly the dead person will see all the fierce things. No? In the body will be torn apart of the, the body iron that will poke in his body. Scared! So yeah, I think he's a little bit dead. <laughs> well now, scared to second death. <laughs> but, Padma of Samawa said, when I tell you the truth, but tell you what, can you read the next one? Please, please, please. Be not frightened, not terrified. Tell no lies and fear not the Lord. Death. The body being a man of God, <laughs> he is incapable of dying even though beheaded and quartered. In reality, the dying body is of the nature of boldness. Thou need not be afraid. The lords of death are things what are thing own hallucination. <laughs> the desired body is a body of propensities and void. Voidness cannot injure voidness. The qualityless cannot injure the qualityless. Apart from one's own hallucination, in reality there are no such things existing outside oneself as Lord of Death, or God or Demon, or the Who and the Spirit of Death. X, so as to recognize it. Yeah, true. So, many, even many Christian ministers, right? How is your imagination? They say, you imagine it, you don't have to go to a physical hell to get help. Right now, it's your thing. And we go have all kinds of your own thinking. So, Pama, Sawa, don't tell you. Don't blame God for going to hell. <laughs> you feel hell. So, actually, oh. religion create this. You know? Yeah, actually, it's an expansion of the earlier statement. The earlier statement says when you die, you go to heaven. But some people are It's all hallucination. You cannot die. You are immortal. How can the heart affect you? So there must be a reason why you're having all this fearful dream. This fearful dream is your karma. You created this dream by your techniques. This is connected with Tibetan sky bearer. Right now, let's see what the little interesting person now. I need you to check what I say, you know. <laughs> I can drive to the <laughs> What you say, uh, I put in my mind very deeply. I'm a shadow of motion, but this second mood I say, you know. Oh, very good, actually. In Tibet, and even China, when a person died, they will recite this thing. This is all right. But the limit is in this photo, or use the sky there in Tibet. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Oh, Dr. Ong don't know what is sky barrier thing. So, Papa, you create your own house. But, guess what? So, you say that, uh, that people, they left the vouchers uh, in the dead body. Uh, now, this bird is in the dead body. It's also practiced by some Indian in America. They have it. So, after that, uh, there's no more dead body for the Chinese star and Chester Oceans. Because they can't get it before you do that. Two old stones. I have frozen, frozen, read many versions of Bodo Kodo. This is one of them. But there are a few other versions that also I went through. Now, I found it very interesting. And I tried to check the commentary. What they say about this. Uh, this book was commented by Wim Po Chi. Uh, Zhou Yang Chong Ba, I don't know him now, but I must say probably a high level Tibetan scholar, I see. So I will respect what he says, I see. So Dr. Ali, this is how I respect that. I will take out that read. I will take out another version of Tibetan book that they read to see what they say. Uh. And I can tell you many times uh, they will contradict each other. <laughs> Many times they will say the same thing. So you have to pick up. It's up to you. Yes. I repeat now all the comments here that do not necessarily agree. Mm -hmm. So you have to go through and pick up, look at the word to see which one you think that is more correct. Now, let me see here. And religion held to take after life when you were so punished. More often through torture. It's terrible torture, you know. No one second, you know, but forever and ever. Wow, that's very pleasant thing. Then this is what happened. You locate a hell in another dimension. So you have after life, I went back and I got three limbo also. Other religions who don't believe say actually it means the ego of the deep, the great, located under the surface of the earth. So sometimes you say the hell is really underworld, world of the deep. So you find the religion uh, are divided on what the, do they mean by hell. And Christian are the same. Even within Christianity, there are some people, most of them believe in hell. But there are some who don't believe in hell. Like I said, I do not believe in hell. <laughs> but now, uh, the reincarnation, <laughs> before I say that I die, uh, next time I will be born as a dog. Okay? Yeah, I, fortunately, I will be born as a king. Uh, of course, everybody hopes to be born as a king. <laughs> uh, nobody wants to be born as a dog. But uh, the Boratola uh, mentioned there are lower formula, the hungry ghost. I think there is about seven or nine different uh, afterlife mentioned in the Boratola. And Papa, some of us say they are all a uh, hallucination. But, who are you? Uh, Whatever is your mindset, uh, you will enter the world uh, just like a day last world. Or you will enter the world uh, just like a dog. Or you will enter the world uh, just like a hungry ghost. I will put it very bluntly. Uh, let us say uh, that I look at Chen, he's a good man. When he died, uh, I had a feeling he would a feeling in heaven. A very beautiful feeling. Uh, 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 <laughs> but, uh, he's like, hey, but, get off, uh, uh, look at you, I don't see any evil person. Let's put somebody evil outside. Uh, when he goes to heaven, uh, he comes up with banning, uh, he becomes the animal world. Uh, he will probably be born as a chicken. 
Hukum the law Now he's a preacher Don't convert you to Christian Ah, you like that, you know? You... What's that? Truth and 
Okay. You see that? Okay. Oh. The more you get, the longer you go. <laughs> but the Christian had a very unique concept about how and they particularly let me use this word Jihina. Jihina. I'm going to read my if your hand costs you to stumble, turn it off. It's good for you to enter into life then. Rather than having two hands going into Jihina hell, into the unquenchable fire, where the wound dies not, and the fire is not quenched. If your foot costs you to stumble, cut it off. It's good for you to enter into life half rather than having your two feet to be cast into hell, Jihina, the word Jihina. Where the world dies on and the fire not grants. If your eyes cause you to stumble, take it out. It's good for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes on. Cast into the Jihina hell. And I can tell you, uh, that's what I confirm. When the music talks about Jihina fire, they are very fear. <sighs> hey, talk Manji. You're shit. But I'm not going to do it. Hey, well, why don't I get it? You should go to Obey. You may go to Jihina fire. Oh, I'm so ready for that. So right, just a pump it out of the stairs. You see, the one who let you know the original work, the country is hell. So people do not realize the source of this word hell. It is from the Greek word Jihina. Jihina does not mean how. Jihina, in Jesus Christ's time, it was a rubbish town south of Jerusalem. They call it very a pinnum. Jihina. And in this very just just very silently, south and south, very silently, Yeah, it's not the right. The table. So, 
Muslim will eat popcorn. <laughs> but the main thing is. Uh, the jihana is uh, garbage dump. The Jews throw all the garbage there. They throw the dead body there. And then the person who are executed, they also throw there. You see. And to carry out the smell, they burn. So that place are uh, forever the rotting body. Of course, the mega crop. And the fire are over there. So that is why I see him now. Unquenchable fire. The world never dies, always dead. Now, what Jesus is trying to tell the Pharisees, particularly, you know, the top leaders of the Jews, uh, you think uh, what you get uh, is so notable, uh, it's all rubbish. To be thrown into Jehenna fire. <laughs> so, Jesus was telling the Pharisees, what you think is so good are, uh, is worthless. They are just like the rubbish uh, in Jehenna fire. Whatever you have, you will consume at any time, uh, and you will know no more. You have done no wrong. Uh, don't see Mercedes Benz. But uh, when you go to heaven, uh, they are not there. <laughs> we cannot carry them to heaven. So actually, most of the people today are uh, betting on the wrong uh, ticket. This is the rubbish dump, you see, in Jihina. It's a picture of the rubbish dump. Still there, you know. Uh, this is Jihina downside last time. Uh, still, this is Jerusalem. And this is the valley of uh, you know. Uh, here I uh, throw the dead body here. Uh, Rotten top, worm, fire. Feet, feet 
fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the sword of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. This is the feature of the Bible of God. Because most of the Christian ministers that never read the Bible, they do not know where Paul got it. But I think I told you, it comes from chapter 1 to 9 of the book of Proverbs. It's a New Testament passage. But Paul took it from the Old Testament. All these words that now when you develop it, the armor of God is made of faith, truth, peace. Mm-hmm. This type of spiritual quality are real. Some people don't realize it. Don't realize it's real. So when you are a very faithful person, that part of the armor becomes very strong. And uh, peace, the yeah, peaceful person, the quarrelsome person, the other becomes stronger here and there, you know. So eventually, uh, the whole spiritual power uh, will be created by different mental things. Now, in the other religion, this mental thing are the seven chakras. If I say chakra, you can understand. This chakra is one of the mental values. Of course, they also share with this God that God up. But actually, the chakra is the spiritual value that you must describe. And when you are very strong with chakra, your armor is very strong, you know. Dr. Lee will ask something. No. Uh, now, uh, one more thing. I purposely put the last verse here. How you develop this armor? You develop armor by praying for people. You don't develop it for your own selfishness. No. So you look at the people around you. You want to help them. You pray and this armor uh, will start building up. If you are a selfish person, no uh, one come to you. Uh, Dr. Lim, if you are a selfish person, all this quality will never come out for you. you know. And this, there are uh, selflessness, serving people, loving people, is the key to the development of uh, the spiritual cavalry. But isn't that what all the religion are trying to tell you? So, that's what I'm trying to say. That is what I have to help you develop. Yes, the armor of is a metaphor. Sometimes you say it's the armor of God metaphor. Yes, it is a metaphor. Some other place is called shining body. This one the media for it, isn't it? A shining body. Another part of Bible call it incorruption body. So they are different, different meanings. But they mean the same thing. Uh. They mean the clothing you come to this earth for you. This is the thing. The armor of God, the white raiment, the corruption body, it has never existed before. It can only be created by your interaction with this world of sin. Don't worry too much about the level of sin. All you should worry is how you fight sin. You may be defeated, but at least you have fought the war only. And God did that as you have succeeded. You have succeeded. So that's 
I purpose to show you this, but I don't want any religion to say, ah, my religion, you say the same thing. I was saying, yes, your religion also says the same beautiful thing. Yeah. Ah, Papa, that Christian is too much. <laughs> so you like it or not? Yeah, all all imitation to <laughs> One of the reasons why I can see and compare is that my statistic is very, very good. Yeah. Uh, when I was in Madi, they all know I'm a very strong scientist. Do this, this so I will compare the minute one thing that was more important to see are there any correspondent rules? We are coming almost the end. Statistical profile correspondent. But then it says the same thing, info pass the same thing, the reader also says the same thing. What it shows is that all this form God, you know, God is made of woods. You know. Your armor of God will be made of the same material. I think it was talked here <laughs> maybe a bit more. You go for the problem. What? Okay. We say opinion of Christian. We are going to do, we are going to do. See, as I was saying earlier, this reincarnation one, which is a very touchy subject, huh? In uh, the afternoon, I have a number of slides to show you what the ancient state about reincarnation. But I will never tell you one thing. Many top Buddhist scholars, they don't believe in reincarnation. But they believe in rebirth. But you might know what they are talking about this afternoon. I will try to deal with this one. Maybe Buddhist scholar don't believe in reincarnation. So this is this will be a surprise. Huh? Jay? That monk has not believe in reincarnation. You remember your video on Oh. Uh, the Tamil one, he doesn't believe in reincarnation, he's a Buddhist monk. He gave a video on reincarnation. You ask him, yeah, yeah. you say inside that there's no reincarnation, but there is rebirth. But the sign must know what you are talking about. This afternoon, hopefully, I cover. Sorry, uh. they said, come, we're going to go for lunch first, then we'll come back. Always put to